Hi everyone, today I'm going to talk about how to update apps and perform rollouts without going through stores from a single code. So let's introduce myself. My name is Lucas Fonseca. I am a developer advocate at Zoop Innovation. I'm from Brazil and it's a pleasure to be here today. So to start, I will use as an example a flower shop that wants to use an electronic device as a main communication channel with the customers. So they had uh, some valid propositions that they want to offer to the customers and they want to make the customers comfortable with the exact same experience regardless of the platform. Um, the client that's to start a flux in the mobile app and if he switches to the desktop uh, he can continue where he let off. Um, that each customer had a unique and exclusive experience. Uh, dependent of the business role, the application should change the layout or the behavior. And whenever there are updates, they are immediately received by the customers. So all of those value propositions are based on hypothesis testing. So what is hypothesis testing? Uh, we start with hypothesis. Hypothesis is always a statement. It is something you assume to be true, but needs to be verified. So you had to use metrics. That is a unit of measure verify that the test was successful or and the hypothesis was validated and you should use the criteria uh, that is the value you expect to achieve in the metrics to validate your hypothesis and after that become a thesis or not uh, a hypothesis thesis is a hypothesis that given the metrics meets the criteria so here we had some examples of hypothesis tests that can be applied to the flower shop. So SMS is an effective communication channel for people over 35 years old. 20% um, of discount is enough to customers to migrate from a physical solution to a fully digital one. It's a valid proposition. A, B or C best communicates the benefits of my solution to my target audience. And if I increase the value of the product by 1.5, uh, my customers will perceive more value and consequently uh, convert more. Uh, all of those are just statements or just hypotheses, uh, something that we can assume, but we don't know if it's true. So if we want to make a hypothesis test in your service, Depending on my structure, I can perform several uh, deploys per day. While on mobile, <laughs> as I depend on the stores to upload versions and roll out of the application, so make hypothesis tests are more expensive and complex to program. How we make a hypothesis tests in the mobile today? So we can use feature flags to control the release of the, uh, the functionalities in, our, in the, our app, but we, we still don't have full control over the review and the releases process. If we want to test, for example, um, whether SMS is an effective communication channel, we can create several tests through the backend and make 10 uploads uh, per day in the backend. But when we try to test hypotheses like switch value proposition A, B or C best communicates the benefits of my solution to my target audience uh, that involves change to the front end, we have a much, much more complex process to follow. So using the concept of server driven UI, uh, th that concept come to bring all of the dynamism found in the backend to the front end. So um, all of each of creating tests and hypotheses in the backend is based to the front end without needing to change the stores. So bringing 
total control to those who use it. And <clears throat> using a single version of the application, we can have two versions or three versions, 10 versions in production of the same screen, but with different UIs. Um, we can use uh, screens, uh, different screens by regions or by country rules, by business marketing, uh, for example, to accommodate cultural or market change um, in your screens, in your fluxes, or we can create unique experience per user. So switch user will see switch um, flux. So who uses this concept? Um, here we had some examples of players that use this like uh, native server driven UI. So there are other players that use uh, web applications to apply server driven UI, but here I had some examples of players that use uh, native server driven UI. So Swiggy, Airbnb, a food flip cart, Primephonic, Spotify, and ET. And our floor, floor shop wants to use this. So how we need what we need to use server driven UI. Floor Shop wants to know what we need to use this concept. Um, to use this concept, we need a design system. So design system is all of UI components in your application. They are described like components. So we images, um, uh, custom components, buttons, labels, colors, text inputs, titles, fonts, text, uh, icons, colors, uh, all of our UI is implemented like a component and we can use this to create layouts. Um, and we need to make a JSON contract. So if we will send to the backend um, all of the UI logic, we had to make the front end and the back end communicate about it and we had to make a json contract to show switch component will be showed in the screen so when to use server driven UI um, to use server driven UI uh, I had to I want to apply dynamism dynamics flows that contain many business rules uh, when you want to apply A-B tests, when you had recurring screen layout chains, uh, different layout settings for each business rule, uh, and when you need immediately content to update with all through the stars, you should use server-driven UI. They will uh, help you to make your application more dynamic and effective. And when we not when not to use server-driven UI. So when your applications don't have a major uh, design system, uh, recurring change to the design system. So it's not my flux that changes uh, often. So it's my, my design system changes often. So you can't use server-driven UI because this uh, will not help you to implement this concept. Um, static screens are fluxes that don't change often. So you, you don't change your application, you don't need to change your application, so you don't have to use server-driven UI. Source code don't have layers that separate business role from UIs, so you code uh, had to be a good architecture, uh, a good uh, separated layers. So if you don't have this, you should make this first um, to use server-driven UI. And your service layer don't support scaling or A-B tests. So the mobile should have uh, separated business roles from UIs and your service uh, had to support scaling. So how can I do? How my floor shop can uh, do server driven UI? So they can do it manually. 
setting the contract between the front end and the back end, or it can use frameworks to facilitate the application of this concept. So here I had some examples, Flipkart had Proteus, Facebook Lido, Urban Bilona, and I will show you Beagle. Beagle is an open source framework that's help you to implement um, this concept. So um, here is the font of the information. So you want to, to see about Proteus, Lona, Gator, or Lido. You can uh, access uh, from this QR code here. So what about Beagle? For this example, I will use an uh, open source project called Beagle, which so facilitates the application of this concept. So Using Beagle as a dependence um, on both the front end and the back end, you can use DCL on the server to serialize uh, the screens to JSON format and on the front end, deserialize to UI native components. So, um, as you can see, Beagle uses the Facebook Yoga library to as a handler engine, so it's implemented the concept of Flexbox on mobile. So to organize the elements on the screen, um, to managing to create complex screen, we use the Flexbox concept from Yoga library. So let's code. Um, if you want to access the the code that I will show you can use this QR code and I will show you um, the example. So here I had the the back end. So if you access the the GitHub code, you should use the IntelliJ or what you want to upload the back end. Uh, and you had to open the backend sample, the big old sample backend. Um, here I had a example application. So uh, this this is my my backend. Here I had a controller. I am using Spring. So here I had some annotation processor from Spring. To read the endpoints and here is backend so uh, we call this of BFF backend for frontend and the difference between a uh, uh, normal backend or normal BFF is the power of describe describe your UIs using the cell Kotlin the cell so this backend is in Kotlin and um, and here we describe our screen. So here I'm running on local host. So my application is consuming the this screen from a JSON. And here I had a navigation bar, I had a container, I had a text, a text input a button to to login with biometry, and I had a button. Um, so if I want to change something here, I can just update my backend and make an upload uh, here, and my front end uh, will get these updates immediately. So if I change the text to English, so I will change here to log in. Um, CPF or um, CPF or um, so if I upload this, stop and run. I will change all of the those texts. So let's wait to start. Okay. 
So if Okay, I open my application. Um, the text was updated. So the next time that the user access this screen, they will receive immediately my content update. So I can make um, changes in the UI. I can add some text input here. So if I want to put the password here, so password and here password and here I had to I will use mobile So we had two um, two text inputs and two texts. And if I upload this, I upload this change on my back end. So let's wait. that let me try into this text so I will open the Siri again sorry Yeah, feature is awesome. Um, close the app. Let's do your Siri. Nice. Home. I separate your hoping. Awesome. Okay, I will open the X code and run this again so let's run this again okay and now i had two text inputs so i can change um the logic on my back end using uh beagle so here I had condition components, so I can create conditions on my back end. Here I'm using just a simple condition. Uh, if my, my credential is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, I will 
pass to the next screen, but I could use another service or call another service to make sure that the user is in my base. So I can use uh, this value to, to call another service. But here is a simple, a simple condition validation. If I I don't attention and valid CPF. So if I just use one, two, three, and click here, it will show you my. They will show you me an alert. Um, let me update this. So here now we had um, full English screen. So let's replace the application. I'm I'm replacing the application because uh, my my emulator is not working well. So, but I just had to update on my app store's application. So I can just use my backend to change my front-end logic, my front-end UIs. Uh, all of these components are, are native components. So I had the same power of the native uh, to use on my, my backend. So if I use a different key credential, I will get this this alert, but if I use the right credential, I will see the next page. So I can create complex fluxes. I can create logic. I can call another's another's services. So here I had an an, uh, an example of send request. So here I call another another application, another service. So all of the power that I had in my mobile, I can use on my backend to make the 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 application more powerful. That I can make the application more customizable. So this is the power of use server driven UI concept using Kotlin and the, the back end. But if you don't want to use Beagle, uh, you can do it manually. So you should get a, a JSON contract and your front end had to know switch comp uh, component is called on my, my JSON. So that is it that I that to show you. Um, very happy to, to be here with you and I hope that you learned something with me. And if you want make contact, you you can get this this QR code to connect. So let me here <laughs> we had all of my social medias if you want to make contact you want to to make questions and i am on the discord server so be free to call me thank you so much and see you